Blog Talk Radio. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. Your host is here for the show tonight to interview our special guest. Show highlight the Allen Elford Sports Talk Show. The Allen Elford Sports Talk Show. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, boxing, tennis, golf, and racing. The Allen Elford Sports Talk. Talk show. Tune in for all the news and stars reporting on the games and so much more. The Allen Elford Sports Talk Show. The Allen Elford Sports Talk Show. The Allen Elford Sports Talk. Welcome, everybody, to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Welcome. It's always awesome to have this show. Awesome to be with you guys. We're going to have a fantastic time. And if you are on YouTube, I am live right now on YouTube. Visit the live stream at Allen Alfred. There you go. Just type in Allen Alfred in the search bar. Come right up. So before we get the show officially started, we want to welcome you in tonight. I want to thank our wonderful sponsor. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. So definitely feel free to visit Chef G's at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. And go ahead and visit the website. See any one of the four great flavors. I have classic. You have heat wave, honey mustard, and fusion. And then if you want to be even more ambitious, Come down and see Chef G's at 301 South 22nd Street, right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Definitely tell them that Alan Alfred from the Chef Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show sent you. Tell Chef G's I said hi. Definitely pick up your sauce at flbbqsauce.com. In fact, all of tonight's songs that you're going to be hearing is sang by none other than Sam Scola right out of Maine. So that was the intro song by Sam Scola. Now we're going to go ahead and play. The Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song sang by none other than Sam Scola. Let's play that tune right now, and we're going to go ahead and get started right after that. Thousand for variety, Chef G's blowing up barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's blowing up barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic Chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, Florida barbecue 
delicious and addicting you may need support group definitely don't forget that sauce at flbbqsauce.com so yeah we're going to kick off the show tonight and i just want to let the listening audience know that i'm streaming youtube live visit alan alfred right there on youtube you can see me there and you could join in like we normally always do right here on the phone the phone number is 516 418 Five five seven two again. That's four one five one six four one eight five five seven two. Feel free to call in and voice your opinion. But yes, folks, I'm gonna gotta go ahead and get used to doing more live streams for you folks. I know that you know it's usually audio most of the time, but I've gotten uh, some requests to go ahead and do a few more live streams. So that's what I'm gonna do. Make sure I do some more live streams. In fact. We have a live call on the phone right now. Let's bring them on and let's go ahead and kick off the show. Let's go ahead and do that for you right now, folks. Hey, how you doing so far tonight, Lou? Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Is, it, is it working good? It's working pretty good, but I'm not a pro so, yet like you. You know, I, I got to well, get used to it. Well, I got to get used to it you. like. Yeah. You know, well, don't forget, you're the... I've only been using YouTube for a year, so. Uh... No, but you're doing more than me. You know, I don't usually do too many right. live streams, so ah, okay. this is okay. this is this is a, a rarity to me. I, this, in fact, probably is about the third or fourth, no more than four live streams I've done total. So, when you, mm-hmm. it's like anything, when you do it more consistently, you get better. Yeah. So I'm going to try to do that for right. the the fans that I'm going to try to make at least a goal of at least one or two times a month, if more. It depends, you know. All right. In fact, let me ask you that, Lou. What do you think about doing live streams? I like doing live streams. Um, you know, I mean, it shows that, you know, uh, what, you're, what you're doing and whatnot, I, I think it's a great, you know, with market technology the way it's been going, you know, I, I think it adds, you know, a great advantage to, uh, to what we do. Awesome. So there you go. Lou yeah. endorses yeah. doing the, the video live stream. So I got to get used to doing that more frequently with you right. guys. We're going to work through it together and perfect the craft. But yeah. it is cool. It is cool. That's for sure. Modern technology. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on this weekend. What are your thoughts on – let me get your first and foremost, your thoughts on Bill Belichick. Well, the rise and fall – I was going to say, the rise and fall of the Patriots. I mean, this is not the Tom Brady uh, Patriots, but I didn't think it was going to come down to this, you know, just you know, a short time after he left. And, you know, I thought I thought a downfall was going to be coming, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad or he was going to be uh, – you know, at the point where he's going to get fired or just, you know, when he's saying, I said, I'm done. You know, so it really seems to have been taking a nosedive. I guess Belichick thought it was time, you know, after after this season, which went nowhere. You know, I, I guess he figured, you know, that, you know, a change was coming, and, and it happened. It is a little bit surprising, though. I wasn't so surprised. I, I you know, I, I just don't think – I wasn't so surprised because there were rumblings that he was going to be out. He had a really ah, tough yeah, season. True. So I, I wasn't surprised by it. I wasn't saying like I would write it in stone that he was gone, but I wasn't surprised. Yeah, but, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, I, I, it didn't catch me by surprise that he did it. They were talking about it, and, you know, he, he did have probably, if record shows, the worst season of his career. So yeah, it was well, inevitable a, something Patriots was going to happen. As a Patriots coach, yes. Oops. Yeah, so yeah, it was I inevitable. Because, you know, I mean, because the Patriots haven't been this bad since, you know, before Brady came. Yeah, so you're, you're right. You know, that that's unfortunate, but 
it, it is a situation where I, I think it was time to move on. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, but I mean, he gave it a good run. I mean, he did give it, you know, a good twenty-five, a good nearly twenty-five years, AJ. and whatnot. But I guess all things have to, you know, reach its point. Yeah, exactly. You know, in life, that sometimes happens. You know, it, it's one of those things that, unfortunately, I, I think it ran its course. You know, neither side has anything to feel bad about. Twenty-four years in the league, coaching. You know. That's phenomenal. I mean, if you can make it in the NFL or any level of coaching to do it for 24 years, that's nothing to hold you your, head, be up, you your head down. Be good, you got to be good, though. You know, you, you don't last that long, you know, but being bad. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're exactly right. You, you know, Bill Belichick, to me, is, is, is a fantastic coach. He really is. Whether you liked him or not, you cannot disagree his results. And – I know a lot of people put that his success was on Brady, but to me, yes, Brady was an elite quarterback, but they worked together. You know, like this, yeah. you know, Belichick trained him. Yes, so, did. so it, it's a partnership as far as I'm concerned, you know, and I, I do think they both leaned on each other and both of each other helped each other out throughout their careers. That's what I look at it as. Like, you know what? It was a situation where he helped him out and vice versa. But, yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it's 24 years is a great run. I, at the end of the day, it, it's nothing to feel bad about. That's a great run. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing wrong with that at all. And no. – what are your thoughts on the replacement, Gerard Mayo? I say hold the Mayo. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, you, know, you have the experience, uh, you know, with with um, you know, both on and off the field. So uh, I I think of, I think it'd be a good move, you know. With that, I mean, you can't do any worse than um, Belichick's uh, last season that March. So I, I think it's a, I think it's gonna be a more positive move. I think so too. I mean, I think the biggest thing that they need to do to Patriots fan is not compare Gerard Mayo to Bill Belichick. Yeah, like you that's, need- that's the problem when, when new coaches come in and whatnot. They're always trying to compare to what happened before, and I don't think I don't think that's fair. You I know? totally agree. You, you cannot I mean. Yeah. With all respect, due respect, he's a young guy. I'm very glad he got the position. I'll talk more details about that later, but he doesn't have any head coaching experience. So you cannot expect someone who's new to have that type of success. Now, has it happened? Of course, but sometimes that could be fool's gold, and he he simply just doesn't have head coaching experience. So he would just be a fool. Right. So you need to, as a fan, you need to just say, you know what? I have to give him his fair due. He doesn't have a head coaching experience. And on top of that, I can't compare him to Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is a vet who's been no. in the league a long time. I mean, before he got the coaching gig, you could almost say he was a head coach. He was working with <laughs> Bill Parcells and he, you know, he had a lot of experience. I mean, you know, not head coaching experience until he got the position, but he had a lot of experience in the NFL. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so people need to understand that. And that's the thing. But it's going to be it's going to be really really interesting to see. Do you have any predictions for this weekend? Any games that you are excited to yeah, see? Yeah, I do. I have an upset too. I have the I have the Steelers winning against uh I guess the Bills. I mean, the, the the Bills have been so inconsistent this season. Uh, you know, you know, trying to win that that awful division. You know, the AFC East. I mean, they were up for a while and they were falling backwards. They were even in danger of not making the playoffs. I don't feel so confident about you know the Bills uh, going too far. I don't know. I I, I think the Bills. I think the Bills are a team that, you know, they came in and they're coming in the playoffs pretty hot. 
I, I do think they'll survive the first round. You know, with all due respect yeah. to Steelers, I do think they'll they'll get past the first round. I'm not too sure about the Dolphins. Hmm. And I don't I know if that. Texas... I do have a bone to pick with that, of course, because I'm not too happy about the way they set it up this year, you know, now with the streaming servers. I mean, that's going to be probably the best game of the weekend, you know, with, with, the, um, Dolphins, with the Dolphins game and whatnot. And unless you got this Peacock service, you're not going to be able to see it. So if you want this during the regular season, fine. But you shouldn't do this during a playoff. Yeah, that that is interesting. I mean, that is wrong. The... That is wrong. What's next? You want to see the Super Bowl on on free TV anymore? You know, that'll happen soon too. They don't say that because you know, there's a way that they can sell the stream for more money to someone else to the highest bidder. They'll do it. How much? I mean, let's look at the weekend schedule. Just this weekend schedule, folks. Yep. You have Fubu. Another streaming service is – well, they actually have it for – I take that back. They have it for NBC and Fubo on Saturday's game, the early game, the Texans versus the Browns. The Dolphins right. and the Chiefs are exclusively, as you said, on Peacock. That's going to be the best game of the week probably. And then Sunday's game, the Bills, you can catch it on CBS – Stream on yeah. Par- Paramount or you, CBS or Paramount. Right. The Packers and Cowboys on Fubo, and also the Rams and Lions game is on NBC in Fubo. So I think the Lions, I think the Lions Cowboys game was on Fox. The Lions game is on NBC in Fubo. Oh, and wait, who's got that afternoon game? Wait a minute. And on Monday, they have a game, too, the Eagles versus the Bucks. That's on ABC, ESPN, and Fubo. So you're right. The only game that is this weekend where it's only one singular service is the Dolphins versus the Chiefs. Peacock. Stupid. That's it. Every other weekend game, every other weekend game does have another option for you. You understand? There is another second option. Ah, mm, ah, ah. We made Dallas on Fox Sunday. This guy. What? Green Bay and Dallas is on Fox. You're thinking of the Rams Detroit game. That's on NBC. Okay, I misread it. I'm sorry. You're right. Packers, Cowboys, ET, yeah. Fox, and Fubo. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, missed, I, I, I looked over. I got to get Fubo. Yeah, Fubo. It's on all three. I on. I misread it. it yes, it does say Fox. That's, 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 that's the best service I think there is. I gotta get. I gotta get Fubo. Help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, now, yeah, obviously. Now we're in the college, the college side. Okay, it wasn't as bad as last year's disaster, but uh, in the fourth quarter, I think Michigan just had a little more offense and just ran, just you know roll right past you know transfer opponents. I knew Michigan was going to win, but I thought the score would be a lot closer in the end. Yeah. Yep. So uh, you said what else you got? It was a better final than last year. Okay. Let me just see something. You know, here. but you know, I don't hear a lot because you know last year's last year's uh, final was just unbearable. Yeah. You know, it's always great when they have a competitive game. I, that's all you can ask for is the game to be competitive. In fact, to give you an to give you an example of how this year's uh, game went, if I can get to the right get to the right uh, page here. Apple. Okay. When you think about Washington versus. Um, Michigan, you know, two undefeated teams. One was going to get their 15th win and undefeated, and you were expecting it to be a lot closer. I mean, indeed, it was defensive you know, in the first half, but in the second half, Michigan was just rolling over Washington. I thought maybe the I thought maybe the Huskies would put up more of a fight, but I think Michigan had more offense in them. To put it to you another way, it was a lot. This final was, I think, a little bit better than say last year's final when they had 
if I can go to January, uh, if I can go to January 1st here, I think. No, it was, um, well, like um, the Fiesta Bowl, Oregon's Liberty, or if you want to go even worse than that, yeah, it was kind of reminiscent of last year's, uh, well, uh, well, the Orange Bowl, which was another disaster, which kind of resembled, you know, Georgia and TCU last year, because that game was just as bad, and the Georgia-Florida State game, two teams that deserve to be in the uh, Final Four, was a lapper. I mean, a complete lapper. Yeah, you're right. I mean... 63-3, that game should have been called at the at halftime. 63-3, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I would have said that as a final score, people would think it was a joke. Yeah, that is uh, that is something or to be. If you want to go even worse than that, oh boy, if I got one for you. Now this is not college football. This was college basketball, and this had to be the absolute most pathetic game in basketball history. Period. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Now, normal. We never. We have never really discussed women's basketball on this show, but this was too good to pass up because. Um, Last week, around two weeks ago, the most unbelievable, embarrassing score in the history of any basketball game I've ever seen trying to be a disaster as, oh, where is that order? But, I mean, this game was just, you know, an absolute an absolute mess from the beginning. As, I think I have to go down further. But I'll say, yeah. if, you want to think about, if you want to think about a lap of a game, I mean, this was again, Grambling versus a team you've probably never heard of called the College of Biblical Studies had the biggest route ever in the history of a college basketball or probably NBA game. The final score was 159-18. to 18. I kid you not, 159-18. to 18. That's right, 18 points scored in a total of four quarters. Wow. Now, that is humiliating. Yeah, that's that's pretty tough the right half, there. Woo. At the half, with eighty, it was eighty-two to ten. Mm. What? Why would you bother playing? You know you're not going to win. I mean, I'm surprised you said, "Okay, well, we know we can't win this, so we're going to call it quits." You know, but you can't do that. But you know, that was taking that was taking too much of a punishment. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, that is some score. Yeah, so that was that was a total humiliation, a total a total beatdown. Oh yes, to say to say the uh, least, that's sure. <laughs> but, just awful. Man. Yeah. So that's you know, hopefully we'll never see something like that again. At least I hope not. Well, I hope that's not too. Thing. I hope not too. That is, that is, a, that is embarrassing. And of course, uh, we got a lot of firings, you know, that have happened uh, this week. Not, not of course, uh, you know, unusual. I mean, it was Black Monday, so of course, you know, there was a number of firings. And um, on our side, the Giants, uh, we lost uh, Wink Martindale. Yeah, it, it's uh, they don't call it Black Monday for no reason. There, you know, <laughs> it yeah, lived up to that I, name. I heard yeah, but you only heard that actually he wanted to give it because he wanted to be back to going being game show host. So that was the reason why he left. Oh, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, for those of you under the age of for those of you a certain age, uh, you might get the joke. For those of you under the age of thirty, probably not. Oh boy. <laughs> well, one thing that's interesting is that this weekend you're going to be broadcasting during the playoff games. Let us know what we're going to expect to see during the playoffs. I got before. I've done it before, though. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, man. I'm in my seventh year now. This guy's no rookie to the game. He's catching up to Bill Belichick. Well, and actually, he could catch him. He could catch him now because Bill Belichick, as for now, is out of a job. But He'll I don't know. He will, he will find some ways right because – and that that's a great point. I think this – was more of a meeting of the minds. I think this is what I believe happened. 
I believe they offered Bill some money, but I think they offered him a ridiculously low amount that they knew he was not going to accept. Yeah. That's what I think happened. You know, this is what they do in corporate America when you're too tenured. Right. They will actually give you a low ball offer, a ridiculously low offer yeah. that maybe is around like a rookie, maybe a little bit more than a rookie. They'll give that to you knowing there is probably a 3% chance you will accept it. They do that because they could always say, well, at least we gave him something. You knew you were giving him an offer that he was not going to take, he or she, but you can always say, well, at least we gave him an offer, you know, to yeah, compete like, the masses. That's what I think happened yeah. with Bill Belichick. I think because he did so poorly, they were going to kind of like demote him financially. I think they gave him an offer. This is my opinion. That was just ridiculously low. And he said, nope, I'm not taking that. That is way below my standard. I, think I know I had to the face. You know. Yeah. I think that's way below my standard. I'm not accepting it. Well, you sure it's a great deal for a coach that only won, I believe, three games last year. Yeah. You know, they flipped it like that and they tried to sell it like it was a good offer. And I don't think Bill was buying it at all. I don't think he was like angry to the point where he wanted to fight about it, but he probably was disappointed. And he said, you know what? We'll just part ways amicably. That's what I think. Now, you're, not, you're not surprised on um, Belichick um, leaving, but what about with, um, you know, Al- Alabama and Nick Saban uh, stepping down? Were you surprised about that? I was a bit surprised about that one. Yes. I, I don't uh-huh. think – I don't – the loss I don't think had everything to do with it. I know it was a tough loss, but I don't think the loss was the fact of him retiring. You think that's what it was? I think I do. You know, he, you know, he wanted, to win, he wanted to win a championship. That's why he uh, you know, stayed around. Of course, you know, after he said the committee, of course, to uh, – Get him in the get him in the final four when they beat Georgia, so um, and then he didn't win, so he got ticked off. He's like, "That's it, I'm done." I wasn't surprised. Okay, okay. I, I just, you know, when you go to national championships, as great of a coach you are, you can't. Nobody can guarantee a victory. You know, it, that's just the well, way it is. No so you know, it comes with the territory that sometimes you gonna. Especially when you're doing it such a long time like him, you're gonna yeah. get some L's. You're gonna get some wins, but you're gonna get a few L's in there too. That's just the nature yeah. of the beast. So, I didn't think yeah, the loss the was the only yeah. factor. I well, think you're right, though, to a certain degree. I think he was thinking about it prior to this year, probably oh, for the yeah. last couple of years. And I think the fact that he lost, and he was like, you know what, screw it, I'm out. You know what I mean? I was going to say that. Right. I, I think that played a part. So let's say let's do the flip side. Let's say he won. Do you think he would have stuck around, or you still think he would have retired? Yes. Yes. He would have stuck around. Okay. He didn't want to go. I mean, you know, because he got like, well, hey, I still got it. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> You know, when it comes to Alabama, you always assume that they're going to win, you know, when Nick Saban's coaching. Well, I mean, what's the difference? Saber, I mean, uh, you know, Saban is no Bear Bryant. Okay, well, i got to put it to you that way. He is no Bear Bryant. <laughs> Even though he is a football coach, but you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot replace the Bear. Yeah. I mean, those That's are big shoes still. <laughs> I know he's actually a better coach. I know who's a great coach of the fans, and that's you, because you got a right. big time show. So, what else are you going to be talking about on Saturday show? Well, of course, we're going to discuss the playoffs. We're going to recap the championship game, uh, the Your Fired edition, of course, of the show. Of course, we're going to talk um, uh, college basketball because uh, there's a certain player that's really causing quite a storm in the women's game, and actually, uh, there's going to be a game coming by tomorrow on Fox. Uh, in, in the women's game, and I'm dying to see how she's going to do. I think you, I think you might know who it is. All right, 
Cool. You might know who it is. She's a very popular Sound player. Sounds like you're going to have a fantastic show. Yeah, of course, we got other features as well. Uh, I'll try to do the uh, uh, predictions for 2024. I mean, your own predictions, that is, of what you expect. I mean, everybody has different opinions, of course. And we'll have a regular <laughs> features as well. And of course, we'll have uh, you know, NHL and NBA to talk about. Um, by the way, I know you weren't on last week because I was going to ask you something about some of the uh, you know, about the uh, UFL that's going to be starting. So I was ho- hoping maybe uh, you'll come on this weekend and maybe you can give your uh, brief take on that. Absolutely. I'm so sorry I missed just last week's show. I apologize about that. But I will be on that on the show. Well, to- we, had good, we had a good crowd, though. We had a very good crowd for the opening week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I apologize, fans. You had a big crowd? Yeah, we did. I would think it was my best uh I think it was the best uh to start the opening uh show of the season last week. Whoa, so he's not coming out record, you know but not a record, not the all time record, but a record for an opener. He's swinging the big bat there. He's coming out the gates. Oh man. I don't think gonna break that record. That that record's gonna be pretty hard to beat though. Wow, that's a great start to the year. I apologize. That should have been it should have and been an and one. Not, and I'll be honest, I don't know if you're on that show or not, but uh, you know, it was it was a pretty big crowd when I when I broke the when I broke the all time high. Awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't doubt it at all. You you be killing the game, man. Yeah, and the thing when I first started doing this, you know, on on this on this level, I didn't really think it was that good. It's not good. It's great. You're fantastic, man, at what you do. You keep seven years plus in the game. And, folks, seven he's going to be on YouTube just like me. And, of course, you know, being a contributor and sub-host and whatnot before that. So, you know, I paid my dues, and now here I'm, st- I'm still here. You know, now my seventh year of doing this show, not counting my other ventures in the podcasting world. You know, and, and that goes back even further. I mean, the podcasting world now is, you know, 11 years. Yeah. You know, I've, I made my rounds. Started small, started locally, which is what you should do. I mean, you can't expect to go, you know, national overnight. That's it doesn't work that way. You got you got to start small. You got to pay your dues, and eventually, if they think you're good enough, um, you know, you'll get it. Exactly. You know, you've made a great point. That a lot of times people don't understand that anytime you're starting anything, whether it's sports talk right. show whether it's any type of show on YouTube, any platform, Facebook, Instagram, there is a process. Couple, That's a great thing that Lou said. There's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. A lot of times people yeah. see these big time shows that have a lot of followers, subscribers. Folks, it takes time. It's, you know, that's part of success. When I, first started getting, when I first started getting anyone interested, you know, in this, you know, when I was young, I mean young, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm old now. Um, you know, we didn't have a thing as podcasting. We had to do it the old-fashioned way, podcasting back in the 1980s and 1990s. You know, the internet was just starting to come in, you know, in 1990s, you know, in its, in its infancy. So podcasting was, you know, just so in somebody's, uh, somebody's dream that happened. You know, we didn't think about that, and I didn't think about it until, like, you know, about 2005 or 2010 or, what, or whatnot. So thanks to this now, you know, my dream, my dream has come true. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, I'm right there with you to have a sports show. I don't know if you're going to have a Bob Costas, but that's okay. I'm not trying to be. <laughs> you know, you're going to keep growing and growing. In fact, he's on YouTube, folks, tomorrow between 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. The Enhanced Sports Show. Just type Enhanced Sports Show. But yeah, you know, we're we're doing big things, and the nice thing about it is like this: yeah. Bob Costas, he was in the game for a long time. That's that's where people don't understand is that when you see a person that's up there, even yeah. if it's social media, you know, podcasting or social media, like have a lot of followers, you see the success, but you don't see the journey. The journey no. is part of the process. Then tell, tell me one thing. 
Why is Chip Carey and Joe Buck still have a job? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Tapaya. Oh, oh, God. You yeah, know. Well, well, then again, they got they got that from their dad. Yeah. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's the hookup. It's it's not in business. Sometimes it's not up. what you know. It's not what you know. Sometimes it's who, it's who you, know. you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. It's, it's a lot of times, it, you know. That's right, though. I mean, you got a great point. You got to be talented. You got to be great. But sometimes knowing the right person at the right time makes a or, difference between you getting it. Or to put it another way, <laughs> it's sometimes it's not even that. like that. It's it's sometimes it's just it's just the fact that you know somebody, they know you, they're that's comfortable with you. Influence. That's what somebody you know. doing. Yeah, it's just you, you know. Your, you use your influence to get it in. You know, There's your, a big uh, your, your, dad, your dads or your uncles or your cousins or your third cousin or whatever, or a friend or neighbor. It's also networking. You know, networking. You know someone. They know you. That's it. In fact, that's folks, that's I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk more about networking and connections in the next segment. But yes, yeah. that is that is a big part of success. And don't forget the number five one two five four three four six six two. Hours are four to six. And before Diane hangs up, I better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five one two five four three four six six two. The enhanced. Sports show, 4 to 6 p.m. Definitely support my great friend, Lou. Remember, Eastern Time, everybody. Remember that. Eastern Standard Eastern Time, though, 4 to 6. Not out to Australia, East Coast Time. Oh, boy. East Coast Time. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate okay. you, Lou. All right. Hope to hear me Always tomorrow. Blessed. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. All right. Spread the Have word. a blessed night. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye now. Great show supporter, Lou, from the Enhanced Sports Show. Make sure you guys support Lou, the Enhanced Sports Show, 4 to 6 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time Zone. As he mentioned, you can check him on YouTube, just like me. Just type in Enhanced Sports Show. You'll see Great Lou, or you can call in 512-543-4662. Again, it's 512-543-4662, and check him out. And I definitely, speaking of connections and knowing people, I have to, on YouTube, give major props to Youth Man. Youth Man, type in Y-O-U-T-H-M-A-N. You will go ahead and type his name in. Probably the first video you will see. Make sure you subscribe. But also, more importantly, you know, definitely subscribe. You will see a video there that has, it says, Budget Home Theater. It was just uploaded yesterday, and it's doing phenomenal. That budget home theater is yours truly, my family's, and mine, home theater, as well as game room. That's right. Game room and home theater. Never in my wildest dreams or imagination coming from Brooklyn, New York, rough part of Brooklyn, some things I, I'll talk about another time, another show, but it was real tight quarters, really cramped in for us to go ahead and move from that situation to living where we're at now, where you have a huge game room and movie theater. I used to love watching MTV Cribs, but having Michael Stevens, aka Youth Man, come in Film, your game room, and movie theater is something that I cannot describe in words. I am beyond grateful and appreciative of that blessing and that opportunity. And sometimes in life, God will send somebody to you to bless you. And that's what happened in this situation. Make a long story short, you know, I can't even make this stuff up. We had a local... Homeowners Association. I went to the meeting. I actually strolled into the meeting about five minutes late. I hate being late for anything, but I was about five minutes late. Went through the Homeowners Association meeting. Usually those meetings are not, you know, it's great socialization, but there's usually not much going on that's really so intricate and so interesting. Way out, my neighbor said, hey, you know, my husband 
was talking to someone, one of his clients. My husband talked about your, raved about your movie theater. Coincidentally, he has a big time YouTube channel and he wants to do a collaboration with you. I was like, all right, that sounds interesting. You know, they gave me his card. Lo and behold, I called, spoke, you know, Michael Stevens, a.k.a. Loose Man. And, you know, he told me about his YouTube channel. I checked it out and his YouTube channel was vast, over 100 and now 129,000 subscribers. And I was like, and that's what he does. He films movie theaters. So I was like, man, that that's awesome. But I do want to give you a realistic expectation. I love my movie theater. My family loves it. Friends and neighbors, they love it. However, I do not have a multi-million dollar home theater system. I didn't want to have an unrealistic expectation. You know, I love it to, to, to death, but it isn't a multi-million dollar, you know, movie theater room. I just wanted to be honest with that. And I was, and he was like, you know what? My audience loves, you know, something that's budget friendly. They would love to see what your movie theater looks like. I was like, all right. Lo and behold, we did that filming and now it became a reality. So that is a tremendous blessing because again, for somebody to come into your home and do a recording is just something I cannot put in words as far as blessing. I mean, I, you know, I'm from, like I said, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. We all know what runs around all over the, the, you know, the, the projects and stuff like that. And it starts with an R ends with an S y'all let you guys figure that out. No matter how clean you are, your neighbors got them. They just come to your house. So <laughs> for me to be at a position where I could actually have that confidence to do that, that speaks volumes. So big major shout out to Michael Stevens and youth man type in youth man here on YouTube. You'll go ahead and get a tour of my game room and our family's fam movie theater. So it's our game room and our movie theater. I cannot take all the credit for it. But I will just say that is awesome. In fact, let me give youth man Michael Stevens a huge, huge round of applause, as well as giving God his praise for making that happen. That was all God. <laughs> yes, sir. So check that out. And definitely... Really, really cool stuff there. So to continue on with the sports, yes. And, you know, we talked about Bill Belichick. I think the biggest thing that the Patriots fans need to do is not compare Gerard Mayo to Bill Belichick. Just remember that. Do not do that because if you do that, that is going to be something that I feel like you're setting yourself up for failure, you know. It's going to be a situation that you have to look at it for what it's worth. And what I mean by that is, hey, he's a new coach. He's take, he's coming into a new situation. And the nice thing about it is when you come into a new situation, he's a linebacker coach. He's a former player. He has a ring. That's fantastic. But he doesn't have any head coaching experience. And that is something you have to be mindful of. I think a lot of people think they want the team to win. It kind of like happened with the Orlando Guardians. As much as I respect and love Coach T. Buck, Terrell Buckley, he was a rookie coach. He had, you know, assistant here and he did some, you know, assistant job, but he was never the front and center head coach. And he got that opportunity through the XFL. So me, being a person who covers the league, I would even tell fans, hey, you have to be more patient. You know, this is first year as a head coach. I know you want to win games, and there's, there's going to be some opportunities that you might see where you can throw some criticism, so to speak, but you have to be mindful that this is part of the process, you know? That's what it is, you know? And I, I think people need to understand that, that, you know, Give him some time. Give him some uh, an opportunity. Do not compare Gerard Mayo to Bill Belichick. They're just two completely different people. Yes, Bill Belichick is, you know, um, Gerard Mayo is the linebackers coach, 
but there's a big step up going from linebackers coach to the head coach. Let me just be, uh, be front with that. You know, when you're a head coach, another thing that happens is every single player who's going to approach you want an opportunity. Hey, put me in coach. Hey, you got to give me that hookup. You know, that's even players who are not in the league. So it is a different dynamic when you are the head coach. And I could tell you that from covering Coach Terrell Buckley of the XFL, former of the Orlando Guardians, to this date, I have not interviewed anybody more times than Coach Buckley, which was probably about 50 times. And in fact, on that note, I am going to update the fans because I know they're curious about this and, you know, I could feel the vibe. I don't have an answer yet from the UFL where the you know, Allen Alfred Sports Talk show stands with covering the league. You know, that's, that's, it's kind of like deja vu. It's like history repeating itself. It's, unfortunately, this is what I went through when I was trying to get into the XFL. Now I got, I had a great year. Now I feel like I'm back to square one <laughs> where this is basically what I got. Like, you know, emails not being answered. You kind of have to kind of like kind of follow up and, it's like this is circling a wagon again. I don't have an answer for you just yet. Just want to keep you up to date on that. As soon as I know, you guys will know. So I don't know. What I mean by that is I'm not sure at this point, January 12, 2024, if I will be covering the UFL League in 2024. That is up in the air and to be determined. I've not heard back from the league yet, so we will go from there. I don't want to read too much into it, both positively or negatively, but we will, time will tell. And having said that, you know, I am definitely open to covering the UFL for 2024, but I'm also the type of person that, hey, if you, any relationship, I feel for you to have a vicarious relationship on both sides, it's got to be. You want me and I want you and you need me and I need you. It has to be a situation where it's a give and take. It can't be me giving all, you giving none or vice versa. So it's got to be a situation like that. That's why where I stand in any relationship, whether it's business, friendship, it's got to be a give and take. It can't just be one person taking and the other person just giving for you to have a harmonious relationship. So I don't have an answer yet. I will definitely let you know yes or no once that's to be determined. You know, and with that being said, another thing that you have to look forward to is the Seahawks. Seahawks are going to get a new coach. Pete Carroll has parted ways with the Seahawks. That did surprise me. I'd have to say Pete Carroll's, you know, parting ways was a bit of a surprise. The Seahawks actually had a very, very good season. Geno Smith came back and man, his career got resurrected over the last two seasons with Pete Cowell. I mean, that's just, you got to give Geno Smith and Pete Cowell credit on that. That's, that was a real turnaround from someone being pretty much somebody that everybody, like he said, you know, <laughs> they wrote me off, but I didn't write back. And that's, that's the truth. They, you know, a lot of people written off Geno Smith and he came back. So props to Geno props. To Pete Carroll. Yeah, so Pete had a very, very exceptional career with the Seahawks. The only thing that I would say where I feel as if he made two big, big career blunders, number one was Super Bowl 49. And calling that play to throw the ball down by at the one and a half or one yard line. It was picked off. They end up losing the Super Bowl. The reason why I say two blunders, because to me that even though it's never been public, I could read between the lines. I've done enough research to see what was going on here. In my opinion, Pete Carroll had a fondness and was giving Russell Wilson a lot of favoritism throughout their second run to make it to the Super Bowl. 
you know, definitely you want to be cool with your coach. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. You want to be cool with your, as a coach, head coach, you definitely want to have a great relationship with your quarterback. Absolutely. But I think it went overboard to favoritism and outward favoritism. The problem with that type of situation is you kind of make one person extremely happy at the expense of making a lot of people very jealous and unhappy. And that's what ended up happening with the Seahawks. The Legion of Boom ended too early with just one Super Bowl. That team was good enough to win two, if not three, definitely two. And they probably would have been back to get that third one. So why I say it's two blunders is Pete made it way too obvious to a lot of the members on the team that it was Russell and everyone else. That was a major blunder. And then that led into the second huge blunder, which was doing a pass down at the goal line when you had a timeout. Let me tell you straightforward that the only play in that situation, having a timeout left, you have two timeouts, is to hand the ball off to the number one back in the league, and that's beast mode. There is no other play. There is no other, you know, hey, let me throw up something that's real sophisticated and, and genius. No. Two timeouts. You have the best back in the league. The guy was ball in that game. You hand the ball off to beast mode, and you get yourself the touchdown. And if you don't get the touchdown, you at least give him the opportunity to get the, time, the touchdown. There is no other play. Anything other than that play of handing the ball off to beast mode is a mistake. Can a mistake work? Sure. But to me, it's clear what the play was. And everybody knew it and expected it. And that was it. Because let me just say this much, too, about that play. Beast mode was having a beast mode game. He had about 130 yards, this is off the top of my head, on the ground and about almost 50 yards catching. And he already scored a touchdown. So that's a baller game in a nutshell right there. Not only that, he scores a touchdown. I don't care if he just gets in front of a mic and just says, I'm just here not to, you know, because I don't want to get fined. I'm just here because I don't want to get fined. I don't care if that's what his response is. To me, I'm a person that you give credit where credit is due. Marshawn Lynch scores that touchdown. The Seahawks win the Super Bowl, but there is no other situation than Marshawn Lynch getting that MVP. He scores that touchdown. Because to me, if you give it to anyone else, that was a mistake. Because Russell Wilson, that game, with all due respect, had an okay game. He didn't have a great game. He didn't have a poor game. He had an average game, whereas Marshall Lynch was balling. If, let's say, they handed it to someone else other than Marshall, let's just say, to me, and you don't do a pass, let's say, to me, even if someone else runs it and gets a touchdown, I still think pretty much Marshall Lynch is going to get the MVP. But he scores that touchdown. You hand it off, and he scores that touchdown, and he gets two. It's a slam dunk. There is no other option than to give it to him. And I think that's where Pete's downfall was. I think he wanted to get Russell that MVP. When you start thinking about something other than winning, the chance of you actually winning goes down. And that's what happened. To me, I look at his career as being a big success, but I see the two biggest blunders was letting that situation get out of control, the favoritism to Russ, which led into the big blunder in public, which was throwing the ball at the one-yard line where you shouldn't have just to hook your boy up to get his MVP. To me, that's my opinion, but I, based on all the facts that I got after and also what I seen and reports, that's you could pretty much read between the lines what was going on in, in that locker room and what was going on in the Seahawks. You just got to ask – Richard Sherman, and he'll pretty much tell you there was a lot of favoritism and it was leading to dissension in the team. It showed up and it reared its ugly head in the wrong time on the biggest stage. But props to Pete Carroll. You know, I got to give Pete Carroll credit, man, because he's he's <laughs> he's coached some big time backs. I mean, Marshall Lynch, Reggie Bush. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
So <laughs> that's legit, man. But yeah, so big time hires and this weekend, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the playoffs. We got the Browns versus Texans. Again, that game is gonna be 4:30 p.m. tomorrow on NBC and Fubo. Yeah, Fubo is pretty much, you know, covering most of the games. Not everyone, but a lot of them. But in this game here, I just feel as if the Browns are going to win this game. As much as I like C.J. Stroud, I just feel as if the defense that the Browns have, I love the fact that they have that gritty type of offense. I think they're going to be able to run the ball and have some success. They definitely got to bring their defensive game up, but I think the Browns are going to be able to take care of the Texans. The Dolphins and the Chiefs are at 8 p.m. It's a light game. That is on exclusively only on Peacock. That's what Lou was talking about. That game is the only game on Peacock, the Dolphins and the Chiefs. As much as the Chiefs have been faltering this year, I don't feel as if they're going to falter enough to lose to the Dolphins. With all due respect, I just feel as if the Dolphins' defense is not strong enough. I feel as if the Dolphins are going to feel a little bit more nervous in this game. And the Chiefs had that rest. I just think that the Chiefs come playoffs are going to click. I do still think their drops are an issue, but I think they will have less drops and play more like the Chiefs. And I think they're going to need to do that to beat the Dolphins. But I do see the Chiefs beating the Dolphins and advancing. I'm not saying for sure that the Chiefs are going to go all the way, but I do think they'll make it past the first round. That's on Saturday's game. Then we have Sunday. Sunday's the one o'clock game is the Steelers against the Bills. The Steelers are at the Bills on CBS streaming on Paramount, CBS or stream on Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. So this can be a very good game. As I was saying earlier, I just feel as if the Bills are really, really in a good spot. They're coming into the playoffs hot. They got to feel great about themselves. I just feel as if they have a little bit too much offense for the Steelers. I do think the Steelers have great defense, but I just think the Bills are going to put a little too much pressure on them. They're going to keep the defense working a little too hard, and they will have some opportunities. I do expect, unfortunately, Josh Allen to make probably a pick or two to make it real interesting, but I just think the Bills will move past the Steelers. If the Packers and the Cowboys are the 4.30 p.m. East game, that's on Fox or Fubo, Fubo or Fox. And Packers and the Cowboys, this this could be an upset for the Packers, but I, I just think, you know, let me just see here. Give me one second, folks. Give me one moment. We just lost our connection on Blog Talk Radio, as you can hear there. All right. So, yes, just want to make sure that we were still in line. We are beautiful. So, yes, as I was saying, Packers and the Cowboys, 4.30 p.m., Fox, Fubo. The Cowboys in a playoffs are hard to trust but I do think they'll get past the Packers. Not that the Packers are any slouch, but I just feel as if I don't fully trust the Cowboys, but I don't think I trust them that much to lose the first round. I just think that this, you know, they got to make it past the first round. I think this is the year they do it. So I'm going to go on a limb and say the Cowboys will beat the Packers. The Rams at the Lions, 8 o'clock p.m., NBC or Fubo, it's going to be a tough game. I, I, that one's going to be real tough, but I'm going to go with the, the Lions. I, I like the Lions to get at least past this, the Rams. They should be able to do that. I hope they do that. It's, you know, oh, yeah, by the way, folks, man, I watched that documentary, Bye Bye Barry. Bye Bye Barry, and that is an outstanding documentary. Go check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. You just go ahead. Bye bye, Barry. And I say this with all due respect. I have met Emmett Smith 
a couple times. I have pics with Emmett. I have also interviewed Emmett at Daytona 500. He's an outstanding man, outstanding entrepreneur. Just really awesome to see, you know, Emmett doing his thing many years after he stopped playing. All due respect for him. It's not about Emmett. It's just about how great Barry Sanders is. To me, I said it even before the documentary, but even watching the documentary even more so, Barry Sanders, to me, is the best running back that I have ever seen. He is just just phenomenal. I mean, if you watch him, his, his film, going left and right, breaking tackles, spinning, I mean, just all the time, just phenomenal. And I'm glad I watched that documentary because it was always a mystery to me. To like, why did he stop playing? He retired too early. You know, he took vacation, so I didn't really have answers. You know, I know he, he kind of needed to clear his head. I know the fact that he needed to kind of literally get away from it all. But it answered a lot of questions for me. It made sense to me why he uh, Barry Sanders retired when he did. I don't think it was just the losing. I think it was a situation where a season, his dad talked him into playing the season. Like, you think he retired early. The last season he played, his dad had to convince him and talk him into playing that last season. So it's a situation where the man has been playing football for a long time. I feel as if a couple things happened when the Lions got rid of a lot of his war buddies that were there for many, many years. Even though the team was losing, he still believed in his brothers that were on the team that were been there a long time, that they were going to catch lightning in a bottle. The team was going to get some other great free agents and go back to their winning ways. Because they did have a couple of seasons. They went deep in the playoffs. When they got rid of some of his brothers – that were there for a long time. And then the team was losing a lot. I feel as if Barry was like, you know what? There's nothing to play for. My heart is not into it. The desire is not into it. Those other guys, there was also two guys who got paralyzed. I think it was a combination of things, but the crux of it wasn't just the losing. I think with Barry, the way I, and I've never met Barry Sanders, I got the impression that the man just lost his passion and his drive to compete at the highest level. And that's what really drove him. Once that drive was out, I think his father convinced him to stick around, but I think he was already looking for exit stage left. And at least the dad talked him into one extra season, but I don't think it was enough with the things that happened that it was going to enough for his dad, even his own dad to convince him to come back another season. I still believe Barry Sanders, my opinion is the best and number one back in the league. I still think Jerry Rice is the number one wide receiver to ever play in the NFL. And the reason why I think that is because not just the records, I read the man's book and I've also watched Jerry Rice. It's his worth ethic. The fact that he was able to play in so many big games the fact that he stayed on the field, that say distraction free, not a bunch of controversy. He had a lot of longevity and a lot of records. There was a lot that went into Jay Rice and me feeling as if he's number one. Do I think there was more talented guys throughout the league that I've seen? Oh yeah. There and even Jerry would even meet it, would even admit it. Faster, longer, even run better routes. But all things being said. To me, the number one elite and number one receiver that I've seen in NFL is still Jerry Rice. Worth ethic, consistency, played in big games, stayed out of trouble, had longevity. You know, until he got older and got hurt, he was pretty much catching everything. And he had a catch with, with a righty who threw a ball a little bit with more ear underneath it, a little bit more loft. Joe Montana, then he had a guy that was kind of like Michael Vick and Steve Young where he just dipping it out and lefty. So we can have the debate sometime on the show. But yeah, those are my things. And then drum roll, please. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. So 
The game of the week is on Monday night. That is the Eagles at the Bucks right here in Tampa Bay. The Eagles at the Bucks, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game, night game, ABC, ESPN, and Fubo. ABC, ESPN, and Fubo, Monday night game. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity for the Bucks to get a playoff win. I think this, I believe the Bucks will pull off the upset and beat the Eagles. I repeat that. I believe the Bucks will pull up the upset and beat the Eagles. I think they're getting the Eagles at the right time. The Eagles are not 100%. It's going to be a low-scoring, grinded-out type game. I just feel as if the defense got to step up. Baker Mayfield got to step up. White's got to step up. I mean, the Bucks got to step up to win this game, but I do think they will gear up and do what they need to do, and I think the Bucks will beat the Eagles. The Eagles are dealing with some injuries, but hey, injuries are part of this league. You got to take advantage of it. You're on the other team. I think the Bucks are going to go ahead and beat the Eagles. So I have the Bucks winning against the Eagles tomorrow. I'm not tomorrow, Monday night football. Baker Mayfield got to do his thing. So that wraps up the Monday and the Super Bowl, you know, this playoff weekend. So we got some big things happening here in the sports world. Just if you're joining us, let me just give you that phone number in the future. 516-418-5572. 516-418-5572. So to bring up the speed, I just want to let you guys know that, yes, I am going to do a bit more live streams in 2024 i won't promise or commit to doing it all the time i will do more often than i did in 2023 which was not too many live streams you know i love live streams but i kind of don't like live streams because you know when you schedule things with live streams somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to do and then it doesn't come across as well as i would like you know that's way it goes but i definitely want to do more live streams in 2024 that is the goal in fact my great friend youth man stevens you got to check that out type in youth man see that video the home theater video but he told me encouraged me you know you need to get in front of the camera a bit more and also fans have been telling me that too and i'm like okay you know i don't want to be in the camera you know in your face all the time but I need to make a concert effort to go ahead and do it a bit more frequently. So I, you have my word, I'm going to do that. Got a lot of great things coming up in January. So keep your eye out on the Facebook page, Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show, and YouTube. Right here at YouTube, type in Alan Alfred. Please follow or subscribe to this channel. It'll be fantastic. But yes, we're going to do that. This is going to be a big year for 2024. I'm always positive that things are going to work itself out. And one thing that always works itself out and never lets me down is <laughs> definitely none other than the man himself, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely check out Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce right here at 301. South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Check them all on out and just let them know the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show sent you. You can also see Chef G's right here at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Check out the classic fusion honey mustard or I know I'm missing one. Heat Wave. There you go. Heat Wave, classic honey mustard and fusion. There you go. All four flbbqsauce.com flbbqsauce.com we're going to go ahead and play the Sam Scola Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song for you again that song is written by Sam Scola right there out of Maine really appreciate Sam Scola and his beautiful wife Mary so definitely if you need 
a songwriter, you need to sign somebody for a big time contract. He's even on Spotify, folks. Type in Sam Scola. Reach out to me here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show, and I will connect you with Sam Scola. You guys need to give him that big deal because he is a big time songwriter. In fact, let me play one of his great songs, the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song, right here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Comes in for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic. For chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's, Florida barbecue sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need support group. Definitely don't forget to check them out at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. So that brings us to the conclusion of another great Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. So definitely, once again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Allen Alfred, or follow us on Facebook, Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. And you can visit us at Instagram. Please support. Really appreciate you guys supporting this channel. Really appreciate you guys listening to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I will be back again next Friday. Feel free to save this number, 516-418-5572. Again, that's 516-418-5572. And I'll be back next Friday, same bat time, same bat channel. That is 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. So we're going to have a lot going on for you. Definitely coming on in the next few weeks. But be blessed. Be well. Take care of yourself. Until we meet again, have a great night. I'll see you again at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Yeah.